video never gets old. <laughs> I'm sad it's going to be over. Because this Wednesday night is All Together Night. If you've never been, man, I want to encourage you to come. It's going to be such a great night all together. And um, I, I was told that we, I should encourage you to bring, uh, you know, a blanket or chairs or whatever. We're going to have just a great night just eating together and, and hanging out. So how are you all doing this morning? You good? Good. It's good to see you today. I, uh, I got a text from Pastor Gary uh, from Zimbabwe, and he's coming home this week. And um, he actually asked that we would be praying today. There's lots of, lots of stuff happening there uh, with the elections and all that's going on that just happened there. Lots of, honestly, turmoil. And he is right in the middle of it. Um, in fact, he told me that they uh, declared martial law this past Thursday. And lots of stuff going on. And so he's preaching several times today, although they're seven hours ahead, so he's probably winding up his preaching. But I felt like we should still go ahead and pray for him. Would you agree with me? Can we just lift our hands all over this place and just begin to ask the Lord? We just ask you, Father, to pour out on Pastor Gary today. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for this man that is is going across uh, to other countries to release your heart. We ask God that boldness would be upon him today. We ask for a word from heaven to continue to be released. I pray that you would use him to bring peace in that place. We ask for protection on him. We ask for protection over him. We ask for angels to surround him. In his remaining days there, in this, in this tumultuous time there, God, we ask that you would literally just surround him in every way, every place that he places his feet, God. We ask for that country, for, for Zimbabwe, God. We ask for uh, the believers in Zimbabwe, that you would just encourage them. We ask for encouragement over them. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you. We thank you that you are hearing this and that you are going to bring Pastor Gary safely home to us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Man, how many love the presence of the Lord? <laughs> it's kind of why we're here. <laughs> All right? I mean, man, this morning was so good. Um, you know, you just have these seasons or moments when the Lord is just so so near. He's always near, but you know what I mean? Those moments when like, wow, he's so near, and, and he, is, he is near right now. Um, and I just thought, I know we're running late, but just for two minutes, could we just lift up a little bit of worship to him? We don't need the band. They're awesome, but we don't need them. We've got a band right here in your throat. It's called vocal cords hitting each other, right, and making sound. Could we just lift up just praise right now? Just sing out something. Just sing out love to him. Just sing out yeah, we love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Your, your presence is heaven on earth. We welcome your presence. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You are good, good, oh. You are good, good, oh, sing it out. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You're so good. Man, I love him. So thankful for the gift to be able to share this morning and uh, share what I believe the Lord's uh, put on my heart for us today as a church. And um, the last couple of weeks, it's just been a treat to be able to share with you. And, and I want to just recap a little bit um, in maybe a different way um, what, what we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Is that all right? So the first thing is this, that we live in this world. How many live in this world? <laughs> <laughs> Some are like, oh, they, they live in another world. <laughs> How many live in this world? Yeah. So the truth is we live in this world, but we represent another. We represent another. Um, when we become born again, when we decide to follow Jesus, we actually enter a whole new life. It's not like, like a few things change. Everything changes. 
everything changes. We, we enter into a whole new life and we actually become then citizens of another kingdom. A totally different kingdom. And, and because of that, we actually are alive for a totally different set of purposes. <laughs> How many are glad for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we lived for ourselves, but now we live and move and we have our actual whole entire being in him. Did you, did you hear me on that? We, we live for ourselves before and then we became a new person and now we get to live and actually move everything that we do, have our being in him. It's all in him. It's all in him. And now we get to bring our father's heart right here to where we live. So we're shifting our thinking, right? How many want a shifting in your thinking? We always need it, don't we? We're shifting our mindset and we're shifting our expectation to literally see every place that my footsteps becomes a place where he can come. Where he invades. We could say it like this. As a kingdom person, because I'm there, he is there. Can you imagine living your life like that? Because I'm there, he's there. And I walk into Starbucks, because I'm there, he's there. When I'm in the grocery aisle, because I'm there, he's there. Think about it. It's a shift in our thinking, right? When he walks into the room, everything changes, right? Do you believe that? When he walks into the room, everything changes. So as kingdom people, we could actually say it like this, that the reality of that is the same when we can walk in a room. And here's the Bible behind it. We said it a couple of weeks ago, 1 John 4, 17. He says, it says, as he is, so are we in the world. As he is, so are we in the world. So if you are a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> that was kind of weird. <laughs> you're like, that's so deep. Wherever you go, there he is. So we're actually just simply making room for him in everything. Everybody say everything. We're making room for him in everything. I think of, I think of people like Jim Batten and I think of like Jerry France, two guys, men in our church. They're wonderful men. They, they lead our family center service in the other room. Can you all give a shout out to the family center people? They're, they're in the, the family center right now. They're worshiping and just a part of our church just like, like you are in this room. And those two men, they're over there and they're, they're in a role of literally pastoring that room. They're there to bring the heart of God there. They're bringing leadership to that room. And they both work full-time jobs during the week. And, and uh, they're successful in their roles that there. And I know these two guys. They see all that they do as a living demonstration of the kingdom of God. So in other words, they don't see their life through the lens of like, hey, I've got this ministry thing I do on the weekends, and then I go to my secular job and do that. They don't see it as separate. They see it as all in the kingdom of God. The two roles that they have on the weekend and during the week, they look very different, but they're the same purpose. They're the same purpose. What if the church of Jesus Christ, we all saw our lives like that? That it doesn't matter wherever you go, you're bringing him to that place. And there's no difference from ministry roles or things that you do in the church. You bring him wherever you go. And I know these two men, they're making room for him in everything. They're making room for him in everything. To release his purposes there, we could call this seeking first the kingdom of God. Seeking first the kingdom of God, it's priority, right? It's the first thing. So if seeking first the kingdom of God is the priority, then I'm bringing it wherever I go. There's no place off limits. 
There's no place off limits. There's no place off limits. Church, we're talking, we're talking about a way of life where there's no place off limits. Literally nowhere that we go. No place, no time that's off limits. What happens when we live a life like that? Life flows. Spirit of God flows. When I open up, the Spirit of God flows all the time, and the mundane becomes alive. The ordinary becomes extraordinary. Come on, are you with me? Seemingly insignificant moments become significant when I'm living like that because there's always purpose in everything that I do. There is purpose in everything. Now there's vision in everything that I do when I'm a kingdom person and I'm not waiting for some time or some place to come. Did you get that? I'm not waiting for some moment to come where maybe my role shifts or I get a promotion or I, or I get to do that or a new season comes because I'm actually so present in the moment to his kingdom coming through me now. How many want to be present to him right now? As he is, so am I in the world. I was thinking about this. There's something in my life that, that it sometimes keeps me be from being present to where I am, and it's called a little iPhone. And I'm not ready to preach against that yet. Just kidding. I won't preach against the iPhone. But do you know what I'm saying? I was realizing this the other day. Like Sometimes I'm like at places, and, and I have a minute to sit, and I'm waiting for the oil to get done on my car, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just looking at my phone, right? But there's people all around me. And I'm not even looking at him anymore. Like, remember when he used to ride in the car and just look out the window? We don't do that anymore. We look on our phones. I, I don't have enough authority in this to actually preach it to you. I, I honestly, I have to grow, for real. But it's something the Lord's working on me. He wants us present. And how can I be present if I'm preoccupied? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm preaching to me. Don't worry. This is to me. My wife will tell you. I'm, I'm serious. How can we be present when we're preoccupied? How can I be fully there if I'm somewhere else in here? I believe the Lord's calling us back to say, where you are, I want to get into that place. I want to get into that place. Jesus asked us to pray the prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And church, it's the prayer he's answering. It's a, it's a prayer he's answering. Jesus asks you to pray a prayer. He's not going to say, hey, pray this prayer. Good luck with it. He's asked, if he asks us to pray it, he's answering the prayer. He's answering the prayer. Much of the kingdom of God, just say this, I'm just reviewing still, is advanced overtly, and I mean uh, obvious. Overtly, I mean like in an obvious way. It's open to see. And I want to suggest to you, you know, preaching the gospel or bold proclamations or the miraculous and laying hands on the sick or prophesying and casting out demons. You know, all the things we talked about last week in the Great Commission, all those things, signs and wonders, those are overt, obvious ways, right? Right? They're clear for us all to see. Jesus did overt ministry. He did overt ministry because wherever he was, you remember like you'd hear it in the villages or the cities or he laid hands on the sick. They came out and laid him out before him so that just, the, you know, they'd be begging to touch the hem of his garment. It was very public. It wasn't a private gospel. It wasn't a private gospel. It was a, it was a public, public thing. The point is, the gospel is overt. The gospel is overt. It's not a private gospel. It's very much public. Jesus invaded every realm of society, and he went where the people were. He didn't just talk about himself in church. He went where the people were. He went where they were, and he released the miraculous because he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And church, this morning, I just want to say, guess what? He's invited us to do the same. You should smile at me. This is good news. Come on, give me a smile offering. Come on, smile. I'm serious. Yeah, just give it right to me, the offering. 
Just the, the smile offering, that is. Just the smiles. Yeah, he's invited us. He's invited us. As the Father sent me, I send you. It wasn't like, hey, he sent me one way, now I'm sending you, kind of calm it down a little bit, don't do the crazies. <laughs> this is what he said. In fact, John chapter 14, verse 12, if you have your Bibles, you can grab them, it'll be up on the screen. One of the most, I, have, I feel like one of the most surprising, most wonderful, maybe shocking verses in all of Scripture is right here. And it's this, he says this, he says, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do because I'm going to the Father. Wow, you guys, that was not like the most shocking scripture to you, was it? No, I gotta read this again, seriously. He says, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do because I'm going to the Father. He's saying, because I'm going away, the Holy Spirit's going to come. Remember, we covered this last week. He says, it's actually better that I go. It's to your advantage that I go so he can come. Remember, he said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses. So he's saying, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these. Church, what an invitation. I want to just suggest to you, by the, what he just said here, the invitation has no limit. There's no limits on the invitation. He says greater things. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Invitation has no limits. That's why it's impossible to be a Jesus follower and be bored. It's why it really, the church should never be boring. Because it's an adventure to a limitless journey. Whoever believes. He didn't say, if you're a pastor, you're going to do great things, greater things. He didn't say, hey, I want to just, if you're an evangelist, you're going to do the works that I do and even greater things. Are you hearing me? He didn't say, he, it wasn't to like, if you've been a Christian for 10 years or more, you're going to do great things, greater things. He didn't say, hey, you've got to go 12 months with being really perfect and then you're going to get to do the greater things. How many thankfully didn't say that? He said, whoever believes in me, And guys, I want to tell you, this isn't hype. I'm hyped. But this is not hype. I get hyped about this stuff. This is Jesus' life we're talking about, right? This is normal Christianity. This is the Bible. This isn't a charismatic Pentecostal expression. This is the Jesus' life. Come on, give him a shout of praise. That's what it is. This invitation, all that we've gone through in the last couple of weeks, this is not some like hyped up like certain like area of the church that expresses this way. We read all the words of Jesus and we're, we're just talking about what he said we do. I get really high sometimes in my voice when I talk about this. Woo! It's like the northern, you know, that go up when I am from the north. But <clears throat> you know what I mean? That's what happens. Yeah. Guys, stop laughing at me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus showed us, he showed us what a person could do full of the Spirit. Think about this with me, it's a different way. What would happen when millions of people get full of the Spirit? What happens when the church, full churches get full of the Spirit of God and they actually go They don't just have glorious times in a building, but they actually go out and are the witnesses of Jesus. In the power of the Spirit, they are the witnesses. What will happen when that happens? Greater things. I mean, you just do the math. One person, millions of people.
several hundred people full of the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, Spirit of God upon you. You see life as kingdom. You don't see it as living for yourself. You see it as a kingdom life. Wherever you go, you bring him. What could 400 people in this room do to the city this week? You could wreck it for Jesus. And it's not hype. It's just the truth. Full of the Spirit. That's why our city should not be seeing the things it's seeing. Because we have so many believers here. I think we just need to get more full and then actually go do. And I'm talking to myself. I'm not throwing something out over you. I'm talking to me in my life as well. Jesus showed us what one person full of the Spirit could do. It's a call to more. It's an invitation to dream with them. I believe this is this, this scripture we just read, that you shall do the works that I do in greater things, is an invitation to break out of boxes. It's, it's an invitation to break out of boxes into an all-in life. An all-in life. When we walk with Jesus and we're full of the power of the Spirit, greater things are going to come forth. Church, we're made to do great things. Poke somebody and tell them. Come on, just give them a little poke. The shoulder. You are made to do great things. You are made to do significant things. You are made to do extraordinary things right in the middle of ordinary. You're made to do extraordinary things right in the middle of ordinary because he's in us. The church that lives in this reality sees a really big God and a really small devil. Because they know who lives in them. They know what Jesus said. They know the power that's been given. And because Jesus has all authority, we actually take him at his word and live in that. We can't dumb this down, church. It's his intention that we be a living demonstration of his kingdom. Okay, so that's our review. You ready for what I feel like the Lord's giving me today? And it's going to be short, so be, be happy about that. Here's what I want to say to you this morning as we wrap all this up. In all that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks, at the very center of us living as a demonstration of the kingdom of God, at the very center of us living out the Great Commission at the very center of a life of miracles um, or of of us being the salt of the earth or or a, a light on a hill, at the very center of us being filled with the power of the Spirit, at the very heart of it all, I believe, is this, that Jesus lived a laid down life. Jesus lived a laid down life. He lived surrendered. He lived connected in every way of his life to his father. He lived by every word that comes from his father's mouth. He literally lived from the words that came out of his father's mouth. He didn't live for himself. He lived by every word that comes from his father's mouth. He lived a laid down life. He says in John 5, 19, he says this. This is so remarkable. He says, the son can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. Jump down to verse 30. He says this. This is just mind-blowing. He says, I can do nothing on my own. Jesus, the Son of God, says, I can do nothing on my own. Can you believe it? He says, but I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. In other words, I'm here just representing my father in everything I'm doing. Jesus lived a laid down life. He was all in. He was fully God, fully man. And yet he chose to live a life on the earth with the limitations of a man. Not because he had to, because he chose to. Think about this, church. He did it to give us an example that we could follow. If Jesus came and he just lived as God while he was on the earth, I'd say, well, he was was just, he was God. I I can't even approach that. 
But Jesus chose and he said, no, I'm fully God, fully man, and I'm coming to live with the limitations of a man. I'm putting them on myself. I'm saying yes to those limitations. He could have done anything, right? He's on the cross. He could have called fire down from heaven or lightning bolts and struck everybody. Said, hey, I really am Jesus, the son of God. Like, get out of here. But he chose not to. He chose not to because he laid down his life. He chose to live a life as a man with the limitations of a man, saying actually to the point, I can do nothing on my own. Why? So we could live as he lived. So we could live as he lived. He said in John chapter 10, I love how the Passion Translation reads this. He says, I freely give my own life. I surrender my own life. No one has the power to take my life from me. I have the authority to lay it down, and I've got the power to take it back up again. This is the destiny. Can we say the destiny? The destiny that my Father has set before me. Church, he chose to lay his life down. He chose surrender all the way to the cross. All the way to the cross. The Father laid this destiny before him, and he chose it. Everything comes back to Jesus as his followers, guys. We follow him. We look to him. He's perfect theology. He is the example. We look to him. And like Jesus, we've been given a beautiful choice. Do you know that you've been given a choice with your life? You've been given the choice to choose. You've been given a choice to choose the destiny that the Lord has put, the Father's put out before you. And it it starts like this. Will you live for you or will you live for him? And I'm not even talking about just salvation. I'm talking an all-in life. I'm talking about an all-in life. Not where we're like punching in and punching out like we've talked about, but where we're saying, yeah, I am all in I've been praying today for the heart of the Father. Uh, The last couple of days just felt his heart so strong, and I could have gone a hundred ways this morning. I was going to talk about, you know, making disciples and loving on people, but I I believe this morning that before we can move on, that we can, before we can actually walk out even the things we've talked about the last couple weeks, I believe that the Father is calling for a fresh surrendering. I believe the Father is here today. Holy Spirit is here calling for a total surrender of our lives. To walk into the promised land. To walk into the fullness that waits. The destiny that is before us. It's going to take us laying down. It's going to take a laying down. It's going to take a fresh surrendering of everything. Where we don't live for ourselves anymore. That message is not popular. But I want to tell you today that it's a place of the fullest joy ever known to man. Total fulfillment following him. Total fulfillment in laying it all down. A fresh laying down. I believe he's here today looking for that. Where it's not what I want. It's what he wants. It's not my will, but it's his be done in my life. Can I hear an amen on that? It's not where it's, it's about, it's not about my comfort. It's about his pleasure. Come on, church. It's not about me. It's not about my insecurities. It's about his power manifest in me. It's not about me being uncomfortable. It's about him being pleased with my life. It's not about what I see. It's about what he sees. And it's not about what they think. It's about what he thinks. It's not about what I see. It's about what he sees. It's not about what am I doing. It's about what is he doing. That's where the joy is. It's not about what is safe. It's not about what is safe. It's about what has he said. What has he said? Because that's the safest place to be. 
And I hear him calling today, church. I hear him calling for a fresh surrender. And he is looking for a laid down people. And I, I believe this. We're going to see breakthroughs through hope. We're going to see people healed of cancer left and right. I believe it. We're going to see the greatest outpouring. We're going to be in it. But I want to tell you, I believe even before that's going to break out, that he is looking for a laid down people. He's looking for a fully surrendered people that will lay their lives down completely. Not that are in like three-fourths of the time or half the time, but that say, I live for the pleasure of my Father. I believe he's looking for people that are ready to let go. Who are ready to let go. Who are ready to let go of fear. Who are ready to let go of pride and prestige. Who are ready to let go of the pursuit of fortune. Not as the primary. The primary is the kingdom. The primary is the kingdom. Fortune may come. Those great things may come. He's looking for those who are, who's, who are letting, ready to let go of the things that have been. The things that were. I believe in much of life right now, the things that got us to where we are will not get us to where we're going. We build on many of those things, but what he's, what he's doing now is a fresh thing, and we have to get in line with that right now. He's looking for that. He's looking for people that are ready to let go of their past disappointments, who are ready to let go of the fear of man. That's a stronghold, church. People afraid of what others will think. No, he's looking for those that say, I care more about what my father thinks. I'm not going to be bound by the fear of what others think, who let go of their agenda to have his. A people that care way more about him than anything else. He's going all the way to the core today. He's going to the heart of the matter. And the heart of the matter is total surrender. Total surrender. Some of us have been stressed out because we've been carrying our own agendas. And the Lord says, I want you to lay it down today so you can live, really live. Would you stand with me? Charity, where is she? Around here somewhere. Whew. I believe even.